Hello and welcome to another Portworks demo. We are going to talk about how Portworks Enterprise enables day to operations like live migration for your virtual machines, high availability for your virtual machines across different availability zones and automated storage capacity management for your virtual machines or your VM disks for your virtual machines uh, using Portworks Enterprise running on Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa clusters in my AWS account. So we uh, for this demo, right, we have already installed and configured Rosa, OpenShift Virtualization and Portworks Enterprise. Before we talk about the individual features, let's go ahead and deploy a new virtual machine from the OpenShift Virtualization catalog. We'll select a simple CentOS 7 VM and we'll customize it before we actually go ahead and deploy it. Let's change the name call it something simple like the mongodb-vm because that's what we want to use this virtual machine for. And then let's set a password. Uh, so uh, we'll set something super secure like password one. We'll also go ahead and modify the way our virtual machine disks are being or going to be deployed. We'll edit the root disk and instead of going by with the default GP3 storage class, we'll select a VM-SC storage class that's backed by Portworks. We'll select the access mode and uh, volume mode as file system and read write many. And once we have done all of these things and settings look good and they are going to be deployed in the right project, we'll hit create virtual machine. Uh, let's monitor the virtual machine deployment using the CLI. As you can see, we can do a watch command and see that our data volume object is cloning the template. And then once it's done 100%, it converts it into a persistent volume claim and our virtual machine and the word launcher pod are now up and running. You can also access the virtual machine console from the op uh, OpenShift web console itself. Log in using CentOS and password one as the credentials that we set during uh, the deployment process. Uh, as you can see, we now have a fully fledged CentOS 7 VM that's ready to be used. But let's also look at how Portworks has taken care of placing the persistent volume, like the primary copy and its replicas across these different worker nodes that are part of my Rosa cluster. So if you use the dynamic plugin that Portworks has built and navigate to the persistent volume claim section and look at the Portworks tab, you can find additional details about the persistent volume claim itself. You can monitor the replication factor, the format, the size, where these replicas are actually spread across. So as you can see, we have three replicas that are spread across three different Rosa worker nodes. And one of those replicas is our primary copy. And that's the copy that's running on the same Rosa worker node as our word launcher pod to ensure data locality. So uh, by default, Portworks takes care of distributing or split, uh, spreading across the volume and its replicas across different availability zones in AWS. Next, let's talk about how Portworks enables live migration. So let's say you have a, a Rosa cluster deployed across AZ1, 2, and 3, and you have virtual machines running in AZ1 and AZ2. If you want to migrate the virtual machine running in AZ1, you can just navigate to the OpenShift web console, hit on migrate, and under the covers, Portworks will make sure that when your virtual machine live migrates to a different AZ, it still has access to all of its data by mapping it to a replica of that persistent volume claim. So let's do that from the UI, let's hit migrate. And this basically triggers that operation. The beauty here is Portworks by providing that read write many persistent volume claim to your virtual machine can enable this live migration functionality and actually deliver it across different availability zones in the same AWS region. So the, the key point to highlight here is it's across AZs and not across the same AZ. So if you wanted to move VMs off of a specific AZ, uh, because that AZ was going to go in a maintenance window, you can do that as well. And as you can see, uh, we didn't lose access or uh, we didn't uh, lose our session in our virtual machine, machine console as well. So that access is still alive. Our session is still alive. So that's how Portworks enables live migration. Next up, let's talk about how Portworks can help you with high availability. When we're talking about high availability and virtual machines, that means if uh, the worker node or the availability zone in which the virtual machine is running goes down, it automatically, OpenShift virtualization will automatically restart the virtual machine on a different availability zone or a different worker node. And because of the way Portworks does its replication inside the Rosa cluster itself, your virtual machine can come online, like restart back up on a different node in the cluster and be up and running and still have access to all of its data. So let's go ahead and look at the virtual machine summary table, look at the IP address of the node where my MongoDB VM is running. And then by navigating to the AWS console, let's uh, find the Rosa bare metal node that is hosting our virtual machine. 
So as you can see, we are running m5.metal instances for our OpenShift virtualization VMs. Uh, once we find that uh, IP address on one of those m5.metal instances, let's make sure that the IP matches and then let's just reboot the worker node to simulate uh, an AZ failure or a node failure. By rebooting the node, the virtual machine uh, uh, would have to, or OpenShift virtualization would have to take that virtual, running virtual machine and restart it on a different worker node in the cluster. Uh, since the only available worker nodes are in different availability zones, this failover operation or this high availability operation is happening across different availability zones in AWS. So it takes a couple of minutes for your VM to be restarted. And then as soon as the VM is up and running on the different node in your cluster, it has access to the replica of that persistent volume. So it can be back online almost instantaneously. So as you can see, we flipped over from 179 to a 192 uh, worker node in our Rosa cluster. So that's how easy it is to perform operations like live migration and high availability when you have Portworx Enterprise installed on your Kubernetes cluster or on your, on your OpenShift cluster that you're using to run virtual machines. Uh, let's go to that uh, MongoDB VM and confirm that the VM is back up and running. Uh, so, and not just that the node has changed. So let's select the MongoDB VM. And then let's try to access the console for our MongoDB VM. In this case, since this wasn't a live migration operation, we will have to log in, log back in because this VM did go through a reboot. But again, that's high availability uh, a concept that VMware admins are most familiar with, right? Like whenever you lose a node, the VMware or uh, your VM is basically restarted around different node in the cluster. So VM is back online, has access to all of its data and it's ready to go. Next, after now that we have spoken about live migration and high availability, let's switch our focus to automated storage capacity management and see how Portworks uh, Autopilot can help you implement policies in place and not have to worry about monitoring the storage utilization of your persistent volumes. So this has been a feature that has been around in uh, Portworks for years. We're just extending that feature into uh, for virtual machines as well. So the autopilot rule is a custom resource where you can define things like the name, uh, the trigger or the conditions uh, that should be met before a specific action is taken by Portworks automatically for the user. So uh, in this case, I'm setting like, if my volume is more than 10% full, again, this is just a demo, so I'm keeping it as low as 10%, just scale my persistent volume by 20% and keep doing this till my volume is 100 gigs in size. So that's what an autopilot rule looks like. And we have a selector called app equal to Postgres, which matches the label on that specific virtual machine disk as well. Uh, once you're happy with the autopilot configuration, uh, let's save the YAML file and apply it against our OpenShift cluster. Uh, we'll also do a get PVC. So here you can see our Postgres VM data disk is 11 gigs in size, uh, which is backed by our VM-SC storage class as well. So a volume of 11 gigs in size, as soon as it crosses that 10% threshold, it will be expanded by 20%. So let's do a, a, a watch command on get events uh, and specifically look out for the autopilot rule. So we'll change the name. Uh, uh, we configured it as wall dash resize. So that's the name uh, that we are looking for in terms of events. As you can see, our autopilot rule is now in a waiting condition in the normal status. To generate some data to actually fill up those disks, let's navigate to our Postgres VM. And in this case, what we'll do is run a simple FIO utility and generate some data against our data disk. So FIO will specify or customize the FIO command by providing it uh, parameters like the rand random repeat, the uh, amount of data, data I want to write, in which in this case is five gigs, and the read write pattern. Uh, I need to make sure that I am uh, sudo to run this FIO command because that's how I installed it. So let's do that. And as you can see, FIO has now started generating data. At this point, uh, as soon as it crosses that 10% threshold, uh, so more than 1.1 uh, uh, gigs of data, our autopilot rule is now triggered. It did take some time for FIO to generate some data. So once it's triggered, uh, you can rely on Portworks to automatically identify the actions that it needs to perform. So active action spending, perform those actions and then tell you that, okay, active actions have been taken. So your persistent volume, which started from 11 gigs in size, 
after the autopilot rule has been executed should be increased by 20 percent or in this case is now worth 14 gigs in size so again if you are running your virtual machine estate on an openshift cluster or a rosa cluster uh, you can rely on portbox enterprise to manage your uh, storage capacity for your virtual machines for you that's it for this demo thank you for watching